Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Clinton, and I'm here with my co-host, Erica Mello, and we are Tough to Treat. We're welcoming you to podcast number, what is it now, 90... 93. 93. Podcast number 93. We're getting there. We're still on a mission to get 100 reviews by 100 podcasts. So thank you to all of you who have gone in and left a review. Remember, the reviews make us more searchable and findable. And our numbers are picking up of people who subscribe all the time. So thank you very much for doing that. And we do appreciate your reviews. They mean the world to us. Also wanted to fill everybody in on an exciting new date. Uh, circle in your calendar, May the 1st. We're going to have an official Tough to Treat uh, retreat, basically a mastermind retreat. So if you've missed our mastermind mentorship program, our, you know we are going to actually have a full day retreat on the 1st of May. And we're going to be working on kind of the way a real mastermind works. We're going to really like take a good look at a couple of clients and really work through the complexities and the clinical reasoning with everybody. We're going to have mm -hmm. hot seats for people to present and work through their own challenging cases. And Erica, yeah. you have anything you want to add on that? Yeah, no, it's just, I'm just thinking it sounds like a master, like a mastermind on a mastermind on steroids almost because it's Actually, a lot of clinical content. In a, in a very condensed amount of time versus, mm -hmm. you know, multiple days. And I think that being focused like that is the a way is a great way to learn where you're immersed in a topic and a, a clinical reasoning process and uh, you will learn tons. And uh, we look forward to having everybody just, so just save the date. And if you have any questions, just reach out to us as usual. But uh, this is uh, something that we've been in, we've been planning for some time. So we're thrilled to be able to give you guys a date. So that is a Saturday, by the way. <laughs> yes, that is Saturday, May the 1st. So save that date for sure. And if you're not on our email list, please sign up at our website, uh, www.toughtotreat.com. Uh, because the emails that we send out, the newsletters have all of the juicy information about the stuff. So we don't want you to miss out. We want you to get the information and we want you to be part of it. And we look forward to working with all of you in this program because we're very excited about it. Okay, Absolutely. enjoy podcast number 93. This is going to be the story of a shoulder, but it actually turns into the story of the whole person as usual, right? <laughs> so exactly. enjoy, Our type of <laughs> exactly. enjoy podcast number 93. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome to podcast number 93. I'm Susan Clinton here with my co-host, Erica Mello. Erica, how are you today? I am fine, Susan. How are you? I'm doing yes. well. I'm doing well. For all of you who are listening, we are still in the middle of our second uh, mastermind membership program that's going well. And we just announced on the introduction, yes. our retreat dates for May 1st. Um, yes. So everybody keep that in mind, but we're going to hop right into the podcast because that's what we're all here for today. Mm -hmm. So this is a client who is somebody who has had a issue with his shoulder, his left shoulder, um, that's how he, how, why he came to see me was to get rid of his left shoulder pain. Um, the history is kind of on his part, insidious onset, not really sure, did not have an accident or an injury that he knows of. Um, he didn't fall onto it, you know, or anything weird like that. Um, but he started having left shoulder pain that had gotten progressively worse over the last four to six months, but mm -hmm. it started well over a year ago. So it just, as time went on, it got worse and worse and worse. When he came in to see me, he was, he told me that he could not lift his arm away from his body. So for all of us PTs and healthcare workers out there, he was having trouble with abduction and he couldn't reach wow. his hand behind his head. So they, you know, it couldn't reach his arm up in front of his body. He was finding that even doing something as simple as getting on the Peloton bike, was hard because he could not lift his butt up off the Peloton bike because of the pain he would get in his shoulder. Uh, so okay. weight bearing was even bothering him, not just yeah. open chain movement, but weight bearing as well. And um, 
you know, and it had gotten so bad that he was seriously worried. And this is the reason he finally came in to see me is because golf season is around the corner. And -hmm. this guy is an avid golfer. Like he, you know, he'll laugh about it, but then he'll say, but I'm serious. You know, he's working to improve his score. He's always, you know, he, this is, he lives for this. Yeah, um, yeah. The only thing that he's doing right now is he's playing uh, paddle ball. And he says he can somewhat protect his arm playing paddle ball because he can use his right arm to, to do it. So that's the pain. Is he a lefty or a righty? He's, he, he's both. He was, uh-huh. he was trained as a, you know, he can write left, but he, but he does a lot of things with his right arm too. So he calls himself kind of ambidextrous. And he plays but golf with his, is he a righty he, golfer? He plays golf with a left to right swing. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Go. So okay. his left arm is his driver, you know, yes. as he pushes yes. through. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, some interesting past medical history or past mm-hmm. history. Uh, he's had long standing issues with his neck and is, was to the point where he told me, he said, I just, I, I'm nervous about my neck all the time, but it's good. And I want it to stay good. So he goes, I'm not trying to scare you away from it, but he really did not want anyone going near his neck. Mm-hmm. Um, the other issue that he had that he told me about, and he said, well, you know, this was a long time ago, but. I really had a pretty bad injury on my right ankle. So, and I asked him when that was, and it was about a year ago. Oh, so, how coincidental. Yeah, how coincidental, <laughs> right? Really bad, really bad, really bad uh, ankle sprain. He said it was like the worst one he's ever had. It took him a long time to get better. Um, I asked him how he was coping with things like paddle ball. And he said, it's fine. He tapes his foot and ankle kind of the old fashioned way with athletic training tape. Mm -hmm. And uh, he does. Okay. He said, I am fine. He he worries about it a little bit when he goes hiking um, because he doesn't want to turn it. You know, he doesn't want to roll it. Um, But, you know, he, for the most part, he's, you know, he says it's, it's doing much better. So okay. we're just going to put that over to the side and space hold that for a little bit because he really wanted to mm-hmm. talk about his shoulder. So when, uh, you know, we got down to it and we started taking a look like raise your arm up, you know, let's kind of get some movement going here. Um, I wasn't going to touch his neck because he gave me all the reasons why he didn't want me to, but we did start with rotation of the head. I wanted to see what he was willing to do range of motion wise, you know, yeah. because it's important. And it was really interesting. There was this pattern going on the whole time of this twitchiness. So he would say something, he would move, and then he would like have two or three twitches of his shoulder in his neck, oh, you know, just like, you know, kind of pretty fear-based, you know, and, um, you know, so we, t- we talked a little bit about that and, you know, some movements, he was able to turn his head fully side to side, no problem, didn't mm-hmm. bring on any shoulder pain. Uh, you know, typical neck motions did not really make the shoulder worse at all. Didn't bring any issues on in there. Um, and I actually had him do his own neck traction. <laughs> I had him put both mm-hmm. hands on the side of his ears here with his yeah. elbows in front where he could get, you know, cause he couldn't do it with his elbows out. And I just said, just lift up on your head. How does that feel? He goes, Oh, it feels pretty good. I said, does that bother your shoulder at all? He goes, it makes it feel a little bit better. Maybe. Um, you know, but he was, you know, and so just moving his arm around, there was very little disassociation of scapular, thorax, upper trap, cervical, it all moved together, as you can imagine. This has been going on for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked him functionally how this was affecting him. You know, was it affecting reading? What, you know, the computer work? He's a, you know, he has a small business that he runs out of his house. He's on the computer a lot. Um, You know, we talked a lot about that. One of the things he said, the biggest problem he's having is playing his guitar. And he said, I've tried pillows and I've tried all of this stuff. And he holds the, you know, the, the, he holds the guitar in the left hand, the bridge in the left hand and the body of the guitar on the right side. Got it. Um, So he does the, you know, the master finger work with his left hand. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he said, it's gotten increasingly difficult. In fact, it's awful when he finishes playing the guitar. That's the worst his pain is. And then he looked at me and he said, do you think it was the guitar that caused this? 
I said, mm-hmm. at this point in time, who knows what caused it? But everything, we're trying to figure out what's really affecting it. Yeah. And if that's a problem, we'll take a look at it for sure. Yeah. Because he says, I don't know if I can do without my guitar. It's like, gotcha. Okay. A lot very, of arms. <laughs> very important to him. Yeah, Golf sure. and guitar. If he had to name them, those were the two. So anyway, we did the questionnaires because I always do the questionnaires. Um, a lot of anxiety or, you know, on the DAS score, no depression, not really any stress. He's like, he tells me, you know, he's, he's a free spirit, easy to, you know, he does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. He's happy, um, mm-hmm. but he's very nervous and anxious about the shoulder. Mm-hmm. And so anything that he checked off on the anxiety scale was high about the shoulder. And he wrote it down, like, because of the shoulder, because I'm worried about the shoulder, because I'm afraid this is going to make the shoulder worse, mm-hmm. things like that. So not really very central sensitized, you know, no mm-hmm. headaches or any of the other stuff. Um, some fear avoidance with his movement. Uh, sure. You know, I thought at first this guy was probably a big confronter, but he's really more fear avoidant because he's just worried that it's going to make his shoulder worse. He doesn't want to do anything to make it worse. He just wants it to get better. So you sent the CSI A, B and the DAS out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I also sent out insomnia. You know, I want to know about sleep and um, quality of life. And he said that his life is fine, except he can't, he's afraid to play golf. He does not going to know what's going to happen. And he's very worried about what's going to happen with his shoulder. So and how old is he, Susan? He's, he's young fifties. Okay. Young fifties. So okay. anyway, so we proceeded on and basically just my exam at first was just willingness to move. You know, this is a fear avoidant kind of guy that very motivated, you know, mm-hmm. on I'll come every day. If I have to just tell me what I need to do, help me figure this out, you know, very, you know, positive, uh, but very, you know, kind of fear avoidant. So I spent a lot of time with him, just letting him show me, like you guide the way, show me, lift your arm up, lift your other arm up, lift it this way, lift it that way. Show me about this. What about this? And just having him talk it through and, and really kind of just get very comfortable, you know, uh, exploring the movements. And I said, show me if you lift your arm, how far you can go without any symptoms at all. And so we spent a little bit of time doing that because I wanted him to get comfortable with the idea that he was motion testing all the time. And so we kind of use the analogy like, you know, one of the things that I'm noticing about you with this kind of movement that you're doing with your arm all the time, you know, it kind of looks a little twitchy. And he goes, yeah, I'm constantly trying to see if I, you know, what's happening with it. Mm. And I said, you know, it's kind of like when you have something stuck in your teeth, you know, how your tongue can't leave it alone. Mm-hmm. He goes, that's exactly what's going on. And I said, wonder what would happen if we quit doing that so much <laughs> yeah the stupid head crackers or the yeah stupid, exactly you know, you know so or often. you know the people who are chronic subluxers of her yeah. sh- their shoulders and things like that and i said let's just let's just see you know let's see if you can kind of just catch yourself every so often and just let's do something a little bit different so we explored a couple of movements because you know you call it sticky scapula yeah but it's exactly what it looked like it looked like his whole upper quarter is stuck yeah. together yeah, and yeah. so I had him, I said, just let your, we started with the right arm. I said, drop your right arm and just shake it out. Like just, you know, roll it, you know, back and forth, like really quick with your hand, just shake it out. He literally could not do that on the left side. He, mm. It was so stiff. The protective response is so high. He literally could not like just let the arm dangle and shake. So we spent a little bit of time doing that. And that yeah. got to be a little bit fun. He, he kind of enjoyed that, but I just wanted him to see that there's some other ways you can kind of, you know, get your shoulder to let go without doing the pattern that he was doing. So we got into that and got into kind of just the idea of what would happen if we could just get the the nervous system to just come down, you know, come on down a little bit with it. Let's don't be so worried about it. Let's, you know, let's just kind of explore what that looks like. It allowed him when he did that a bunch to kind of move. He had much more willingness to move in his shoulder. And, uh, yeah. you know, he had a little bit greater range of motion, which was nice. And, yeah, it's like um, almost like a, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. Susan. No, go, go on. I was almost, no, almost going to say it's like a protective guarding response that, you know, exactly. when he's That's given, 100%. Like you gave him to move. Yeah. yeah. 100% yeah. is what I saw. So we spent some time working on that. 
And um, then we did some neural glides, you know, just kind of like what would happen if you turned your arm this way and that way. And then I just, I got curious because this was a, you know, we, I had some time for a pretty good session with him. And I said, just sit down in that chair and show me how you play your guitar. Mm. And the position that he got himself in is, you know, as you can imagine, full supination, you know, of the wrist and hand, Mm -hmm. although he couldn't do full supination of his wrist and hand. So he had a different, he, he compensated through his shoulder and his trunk. In order his to left get left hand, you're saying his left hand. So it's how come he couldn't side. supinate? How come he couldn't supinate and pronate? So I was just watching him, and I was huh. looking at this, going, "I wonder why he's do- lifting his elbow up rather than supinating his wrist, you know, to to you know work this." And um, you know, so I gave him something that was straight, like a guitar, just a walking stick that I had, and I said, "You know, show me." You know, I thought, well, maybe it's because he doesn't. It's not there. It's not with him, and it actually made it worse. So. We took a, we t- I said, let's just take a look here at your, the rest of your arm. And very, 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 very stiff in his wrist. And uh, a lot of lack of, of um, conjunct movement at his distal t- uh, ulnar radial joint. Mm-hmm. And compared to the right. Yes. You know, so yeah. we looked at both sides, a little stiff on both sides, but that left side was really stiff. And um you know, what's going on here? He goes, I have no idea. It's just, I, you know, I don't have any pain. It doesn't bother me, you know? Uh, so, you know, I kind of started thinking, I thought this is going to be very interesting when we look at golf later. Yes. So exactly. I mean, it's like he, the whole left side in his brain was shut down and it basically lost its ability to adapt to any kind of movement pattern. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Um, and he's like, I'll just move my shoulder because it's bigger and, you know, has more yeah. range, degrees of freedom than my wrist and my Right. And my <laughs> right. Exactly. And so we, um, so how we went, you know, you can imagine, you know, what the treatment session looked like. We just went in and started, you know, working. I laid him down. We did some manual work on his shoulder into the muscles, especially the, the uh, super uh, subscapularis. Mm -hmm. Um, he really felt like it was on top of his shoulder. He kept pointing there. But when we, when I got in and I palpated deep into the subscapularis that recreated the pain made a lot of sense to me because the subscapularis is on length and tension with the guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and that was the big limiting factor. We looked at, you know, some, we did some easy stuff with his arm on the wall you know, his hand on the wall just to get some wrist extension, you know, mm-hmm. and, and to, you know, kind of bow his head and move his arms so we can get some neural tension stuff. Mm-hmm. And we worked around in some different positions there. And um, then I grabbed one of their favorite things, which is the little squishy ball, my Franklin ball. And I tossed it to him and, and I had it stick it under his arm, you know, in his armpit. And I said, just roll it around, see how it feels. So he did. And he was kind of like, gosh, you know, so anyway, he said, can I have this? It's like, sure. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) So off he went with his ball and, you know, with his marching orders to work on shaking the arm out, relaxing, doing some different things in the wall exercises. And, you know, just like you would call, you know, what you call a wall dog, we kind of just, you know, just to get some weight bearing and just to kind of like start to move, you know, have them protract and retract the scapula a little bit with the movements that we did, keep the hand on the wall, move the body on the arm, close chain, just some stuff to help him start to move in a different way with a little bit of purpose that he didn't have to be fear avoidant about. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so fast forward as we've kind of worked through um he really 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 likes the ball he likes it so much he keeps it in his car he has one at his desk <laughs> and he has one in his bag that he does before he plays paddle ball oh that's fantastic the like ball, a <laughs> the, it's exactly exactly what he's using it as is a is a you know as a reset exercise mm-hmm. anytime the stiffness comes in he sticks the ball under his arm rolls his shoulder around and he feels better his scapula mm-hmm. that was the first thing that actually got him to stop having the sticky scapula and to learn how to kind of let the arm go. Uh, We started doing some manual therapy to the wrist and to the forearm uh, to get that freed up and get that moving along with, you know, just the open chain, closed chain, um, 
got able to finally, you know, once we got a little bit of movement and he could go into abduction much more comfortably and into mm-hmm. some external rotation comfortably, then I was able to really kind of get onto the, up, you know, to the pectoralis and really began to like uh, do some soft tissue work by lifting the pectoralis up and moving that along with the subscapularis. Yeah. Um, were the two muscles that were really whole, you know, the, the protective response was the, the most prevalent and, and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, he started to, to gain, you know, some, some pain relief that way he was Mm -hmm. doing better with the ball, you know, the wall, but he was still having trouble lifting his arm without his upper trap kicking in, you know, in any of the motions. So we grabbed the ball. And we started tapping the deltoid. <laughs> and of course, he thought I had completely lost my mind at that point, although he had so much trust in me at this point because he was improving and he was getting very excited yeah. about his improvements. So we started tapping the deltoid and then we started lifting it and we tapped and we lifted and we tapped and we lifted and we kept doing that until he finally was able to actually fire his anterior deltoid. Once we got the anterior deltoid firing, we went to the middle deltoid. We didn't go as high, but we still were able to get it done. This guy did not have a a supraspinatus tendon pain. He did not have a full thickness tear. There was, you know, it may have looked like that, but it wasn't that. As you know, the, the guarding and the stuff was coming from the pectoralis and the subscapularis. I think it was the, dri- the main driver. There's two drivers, um, but the, the one, the driver in the arm was the wrist and hand, uh, you know, the distal ulna uh, radial joint and the and wrist mm-hmm. uh, were the big drivers in the arm. And then we'll talk about the second driver in a minute. Um, but, uh, you know, so, you know, just really kind of combinations of movements and doing different things, but really getting, you know, he just said the deltoid just wasn't firing because it didn't need to. Yes. The upper trap and the other muscles were holding everything so still it just, you know, and he could abduct to 10 or 20 degrees, which is the supraspinatus anyway. Right. And he, and he wouldn't have a ton of atrophy. It's not like he's bedridden. No, right? no. Like, no, he's so, using so, his arm. Yeah. Exactly. So his impairment is an overactive pec and overactive subscap with, and then all of a sudden you turn that off and with an inhibited deltoid. Yeah. Exactly. So the deltoid was inhibited and we just started using the tapping to, to try to wake it up again, self-efficacy. I wanted him to go home with something that he could yeah. do. Yeah. And he's good with things he can do because he didn't know what to do. So he was trying all those other crazy things. And now he's got real pointed things to do. Um, <laughs> so when he came back the following week, it was, it was like, I don't even know it. When that central nervous system kicks in, it's such an amazing thing to see because yeah. he came back in. He told me he was 85% better. Amazing. Right. It's amazing. Still <laughs> using the ball under the arm. We'll yep. never stop using the ball under the arm. It's kind of like become his like his his thing that he has to do. Like, where's my right. ball? <laughs> it's like a soother. Right. It's, it right. soothes the anxiety and around the shoulder. Are so superstitious when it comes to this stuff. He'll be using that the he'll be using that the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but he was ex- you know, but he was so excited that he could move his arm. And he literally had full shoulder flexion. He had full shoulder flexion and then he could move into full external rotation up at that range. And the limitation is still in that mid range with abduction and external rotation. Right. So that was the part that we've been left working with. Here's right. where we went from there. Cause you, you know, cause he's going to continue to get better and I can continue to help him move in those ways. And so we're following the edge work. Where can you move comfortably? Where does it feel good? If you have to make a divot in the turn, then you make a pivot in the turn and, you know, with the arm and you keep going, just keep exploring the edges of where things feel good. Don't worry about where it doesn't feel good. You know, now that it's going to get better. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so he's, he's doing that. So it came time. He said, I want to go and I want to, I want to, uh, would it hurt my shoulder if I swung a golf club? And I said, well, what does that mean? Tell me what swinging a golf club means. I wanted to hear from him, you know, what, what was going on in his head. Yeah. And he said, well, if I just putted, and I said, I think that, don't you think you could do that? And he's like, yeah, yeah I think I could I'm like, give it a whirl. So he did that, came back, everything was fine. Um, and then he started wanting to talk about it a little bit more. And I said, well, you know what? I said, just show me your swing. I wanted to wait till he was ready. You mm-hmm. know, and he goes, well, if I feel a pain in my shoulder, does that mean I'm doing something bad to myself? And I said, well, what do you think? 
he goes, no, I think it means that it's changing and that it doesn't mean that something bad is going to happen. And I said, well, what do you do when you do feel it? Well, I do put the ball under my arm and I do that, you know, my rolling exercises with my shoulder and things like that. I said, does that make it better? Oh yeah. Then I can usually return back to the motion I was doing. You got it, you know, right. keep doing exactly. that. Yep. So I said, show me your swing. And I did not even look at his upper body. I didn't care because you know where I was going to look. Yes. <laughs> I, I know where you were see. going. Uh -huh. I wanted to see where, what his feet were doing. Yes. And so he did his swing and I had him do it a few times. It's just, you know, just keep going a few times. So just, you know, just keep going, keep going. Cause usually they fall into their typical pattern after about two or three times, you know, if yes. you watch it the first time, it's like they were performing for somebody. So you, it's like walking, you know, you have to have yeah. them walk for a few minutes before you start looking at it. Exactly. So it was very, very interesting because what he was doing was prematurely, he was rocking out to the lateral border of his right foot. So, and so, so, you know, this right foot is his pivot foot, you know, because yes. he start, starts in swings, you know, yeah. so he's pivoting and that left foot comes up, you know, um, oh, yeah. but he's, tra he's transferring his weight onto Wait. the, to the outside of his right foot, but it was happening yeah. very, very soon uh, before he was even coming into the center of his body with his arms. He was already yeah. on the outside of his foot. So uh, okay. he was really, okay. so big toe was coming off the ground pretty fast, you know, he's going left to right. Yeah. Okay. And oh God, I'm just, yeah. just playing it here. He's going left to right. He's getting his big toe off the ground as he's going. Before he oh, even that's... gets to center, before he even gets uh, to center with his arms, his foot, his big toe's already off the ground and he's on the side of his foot. Oh, that shouldn't be happening. Yeah, yeah. it's too, it's too soon. Yeah. It's going to happen at the yeah. end, but it's too yeah. soon. Yeah. So I told him, I yes, said, yes, show yes, me yes. where your foot's supposed to be at the end of your swing when it's all the way over right. here on the right. So he did. Right. And I said, Tell me where you are now as you go through there, if you actually get there. And, and this is his right foot, his right uh -huh, foot. His right foot, because this Got is it. the one that was injured. That's correct. A That's year correct. ago when the shoulder pain started. Yes, 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 yes. So, so we're God, doing yeah, this and, he, and so I, I just, this. yeah, okay. so I just got him a little curious and I said, just yes. tell me what's happening. And he, he looked, he turns around, he looks at me, he does it again a few times and he turns around, he looks at me and he goes, do you think my foot is the reason my shoulder has been bothering me? Yes. <laughs> and I said, I don't know. What do you think? And he said, I think it is. I think I started doing something funny with my shoulder because I was afraid to move on my foot. Totally. And I said, but you know, what's interesting is that you're moving into the position on your foot that you don't want to be in. Yeah. And he, and he yeah. said, well, maybe that's why I'm tensing up in my shoulder. So, so, so when in, Susan, in standing, when you first saw him, was he centered or was he off to the left or the right? Do you, do you remember? He was pretty much center. Okay. He was pretty much center. Like when we looked at body of mass and center of mass right. and things like that, there wasn't anything really obvious because stand on one leg. I should have probably told everybody that too. You know, we did some of the usual tests yeah. standing and hopping on one foot. The guy plays paddle ball, you know? Right. And so I wanted to look at that and see, so, you know, we definitely was, you know, we could squat fully, you know, bend overs were pretty good. You know, he maybe was off to the left a little bit, but he could really stand and hop on the right foot and on the left foot. There wasn't anything really that stood out as crazy in the beginning. So I didn't go there first. I went to the, you know, the shoulder was where yeah. he wanted to be. But now that we're doing this diagonal movement left to right and this injury started happening, uh, his shoulder pain started happening sometime around the time after his ankle really got injured. His hypothesis, and I totally agree with it because I wanted him to come up with it because it's he needs to own this and not be afraid of what's yeah. happening in his body, um, was that because his foot is moving so much that he probably was tensing his arm up and not, you know, and the swing wasn't as good. And I said, I, you know, it's up to you if you want to do this, but how was your golf game near the end of the, the season? And yeah. he said, it was awful. <laughs> yeah. and, and he said but you know I knew my foot was bad and this and this and then the excuses and stuff and it's like but you know does this start is is this starting to ring a little bit of a bell for you and he you know he's starting to you know he was starting to put it together and he goes well why would my foot throw my shoulder off so much and so we talked about integrative reflexes in the body and I said your foot is strong you've got you know perineals were strong I mean you know but sometimes when we move into these diagonal movements, if we're not 
integrated all the way through, mm -hmm. then something's going to, you know, if something's moving too much, the other side may pay the price for it by stiffening or tightening up. And it looks like that may be what had been going on with you. Yeah. And he's, and you're, you're looking at a weight shift, you know? Yeah. So he, yeah. That's shift a huge, especially in golf. And if he's weight shifting, mm -hmm early or his big toes coming off early. So he's a lefty golfer and he's going left to right. That should happen, you know, well into the, the follow through, right? You know, mm -hmm. so exactly. he's doing that early. Yep. And so here's the other issue is he's got stiffness in both hips and the right hip much more than the left. Mm. So, wow. you know, and so that right could be a driver of the foot too. Yes. So is the foot the driver or the hip the driver? You know, the foot just wasn't the, mo the quick rapid motion was not integrated back in. So that needs to be reintegrated. But yeah. part of it yeah. needs to be that we needed to get his hip moving a little bit more too. So yeah. I started yeah. him on some of the salsa dancing, the figure eight, you mm -hmm. know, movement of the pelvis. Yeah. Of which was just as bad as trying to unstick his shoulder blade, but <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes, you know, the chicken leg movement. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, you know, we just started on that nice figure eight of the pelvis, you know, kind of in a little bit of a salsa where, you know, drop the knee and drop the pelvis, drop the knee, drop the pelvis, yeah. you know, kind of thing to start getting that going. And then we backed his swing up and started just working on the feet and driving through the big, the first metatarsal before he like goes over to the side so that he just had that something to slow him down just a little bit and make sure he doesn't shift off to the side of his foot too fast, too, too quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, and I said, that's your warm up before you go hit the ball, mm -hmm. you know, do your shoulder with the ball, you know, do your tapping, you know, on the deltoid, do a bit of this salsa motion and then do, you know, just the, the lower body part of the swing with your arms lightly and just really drive that first, you know, that uh, uh, first metatarsal into the ground and. as your pivot point before you go off onto the outside of your right heel. Yes. You know, yeah. so we just kind of played with that movement and got him going. So the next step is gonna be bringing him in with a golf club and really like, you know, a, you know, a weighted driver and yeah. see what he looks like. But yeah. it'll be interesting to see how he reports because in the meantime, with all of this that was going on, the, you know, the other parts of him that got better were he went skiing again. You know, he wasn't going skiing. He's been out hiking several times with hiking sticks. He's down to a 45 degree angle plank. You know, so he's oh, able to handle forces through his shoulder better. He, and I asked him, I said, how's the Peloton now? He goes, I'm not riding the Peloton. The weather's getting better. I'm outside. I was ask you that about the Peloton. I <laughs> uh, said, I don't, I'm not going to get back on that thing until next winter. Um, but just because he says boring, you know, so, but he, so he's yeah. been hiking. He's been using hiking sticks. He can do a 45 degree plank. He's working himself down to a full plank. Um, you know, uh, feeling really good about how his shoulder's working. He said he noticed the other day he walked through some heavy doors and just automatically pushed with his left arm and didn't even realize it until he was walking through the door going, I just stopped with my left arm. Yeah. You know, yeah. he says he's not thinking about how he puts his shirt on and his jacket on anymore. Yeah. Um, he says these things are just coming back naturally to him. And it's only when he gets now into that uh, 135, 45 degree range with full external rotation kind of that he has those moments where things don't feel quite so lovely to him. Yeah. And so we're working through that part of it now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if we did a podcast on this one of my patients. He is um, a golfer. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think we did. And similar, you know, he, but he had a hip issue, but I will tell you his foot was a big driver mm -hmm. um, in his, in, in the thorax, but the foot was a big, big driver for him because of the weight shift involved. Mm -hmm. And we had to wake up his left side. He was a righty golfer, but he was just, I ended up taping his foot and he just to see for diagnostic purposes. And he was like blown away. And he actually ended up golfers like to make their, they want th to get better. And so he was so motivated. He actually won a tournament after all of that because his swing got so much better. And I bet mm -hmm. you this guy's swing is going to get so much better. Like he is a patient for life because yep. you can make something very important to him mm -hmm. better, you know? So, and thank you for bringing up the tape because I did teach him how to use some kinesio tape. I said, we talked about it. I said, you know, it doesn't hold anything. It's some sensory input. It'll just help you, you know, feel your foot differently. More aware, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, so just go with that. And um, 
you know, the, the next thing that we're going to do, my plan is when he comes in, is we're going to start adding the eyes and some head movement to the shift twist mm -hmm. because he's got to integrate that all the way through to his eyes. Cause yes. I know that the follow through with your eyes is really important. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're going to start, you know, some eye stuff and some eye exercise and some things as well in combination with this movement. And do I know how to golf? No, I don't. And so I just want everyone to know that. I mean, I, you know, you, I just tell me what it is you're supposed to do yeah. and I'll tell you what you're not doing. <laughs> exactly. And we figured it out together. And yeah. most of our clients know what they need to do. They just can't figure out how to get back to it. Right. And so you know, we can come up with some ways. I can come up with all kinds of exercises to help him shift and pivot differently on that foot and to bring the eyes in and the stuff. The golf pro will help him with his swing. I, you know, that that's, that's their purview. You know, but if his body can be back together and he's moving fluidly, then he, the golf pro can work with him. I just feel like, you know, it's my job to help him get rotation in the system and get the swing and the foot pivoting in the system and get the eyes and the stuff all kind of humming so that, you know, he can take and then work on the nuances of the skill of the game. Right. And I think it's our job is to give, you know, a lot of patients are like, well, I don't need to do my, you know, know how to move my left side or my right side. I'm like, you do <laughs> because you need, we need to give our patients choices, healthy choices. And we need to give our patients options for movement, whether they choose to take those choices or move options, is a different story. If you play, if you're a golfer and you're going, you know, righty, right to left all day or lefty, left to right, you don't need to do that, but you need to do that for life. You yeah. know, and, and we need to, and so people are like, well, you need to, why do you focus on both sides? Because our body needs choices. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as it gets. And we, and we weight shift. That's what we're supposed totally. to do. Yeah. So here's the other little piece that I uncovered too. And I just thought of it. I don't know. I didn't have it written down, but it's an important one. When he was first showing me what he was, you know, like when he was showing me what his swing looked like and the whole thing. And I said, so tell me what you do now, you know? And he, so he, you know, he did it a few more times and we, that's when we were talking about it and how it felt. What mm -hmm. I started to notice was he was taking his foot and externally rotating it. In standing? Mm -hmm. So it, eventually by the time he finished all of his little practice things and feeling, cause he was feeling his shoulder and the other stuff, I had him look down at his feet and his right foot was 45 degree angled into rotation, lateral rotation. Yeah. I said, what's that? He goes, that's what old men do when they golf. <laughs> I said, what? And he goes, they do that because they can't twist anymore. Yeah. And I said, well, you can twist. And he said, I don't know why I'm doing that. And I said, probably because you don't want to be on the side of your foot. Yeah, that's exactly. So you're turning your foot out so that won't happen, but it's limiting your ability to pivot. Yes, it's, it lost its, it's ability to adapt. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, so that was that was kind of a cool thing to see too. Yeah, yeah. So fun things to work on. Awesome. Oh, I love, I love, I love treating golfers. I think they're, you know, I like treating any kind of sport, sporting athlete, but I think that uh, uh, golf is so many moving parts, you know, mm -hmm. they all are, but yeah, it's interesting. Awesome. Well, we look forward to updates <laughs> and thank Absolutely. you everybody for listening. I enjoyed yes, this. Thank you. Enjoy your balance of your week. <laughs> <laughs>